So all of us want to get more Connect cards from new guests who visit our church. The question is, how can we get those guests to fill out those cards and give us their information? Well, today on Practical Church Planting, we're going to give you seven ways to get more Connect cards at your church. Thanks for joining us again today on Practical Church Planting. We're going to be giving you seven ways uh, to get more Connect cards. And I just want to say we are we are recording this church planting style. If you're watching the YouTube version, you can't see it, but behind us we have some ceiling tiles on the floor. Yeah. We've got some buckets on the floor because we have not one, not two, but now three leaks, yes. drips coming yeah. down. Stronger than yesterday. We're trying to get a landlord to do something about it before yep. Sunday because we don't know what's going to happen. Yep, so problems so, come up no matter when. <laughs> there you go. We are recording this. Under a leaky ceiling, yes. hoping it gets fixed. If you hear some drops, that's what it is. Uh, seven ways to get more Connect cards. Obviously, if you have new people at your church, if you can get their information, you, you're going a long way to get them to connected. Yes. And so because this is practical, we want to share with you some things. We, we have said very, like we've had episodes, I don't know what number it is on how to design a Connect card template. So mm-hmm. you should go back and listen to that. I don't know what number it is, but you can. I'm going to guess first 20. Long no, time. I don't, don't think so. I, I think we've like done later than that one. Um, we oh, might maybe. have done multiple different ones. Yeah, that ones. could be true. That maybe that's true. it. But we have some on there on like how to design it. So this is not how to design it. This is how to get more people to fill one out so that you can get their information and follow up. We also have an episode somewhat recently, I think, on our follow-up process. Mm-hmm. So this all kind of goes together. But the first thing you got to do is get their information so that you can, you know, though Mark later come back, get stuff into their hands. How do you do that? Here are seven tips for you to get more Connect cards at your church. Yeah. Number one. If you're following the podcast, this will not be a new one, but we, it's worth repeating that you need to mention and acknowledge new guests every single week. As we talk about, we, we, we don't use the language first-time guests because for many people, their first time, they're not going to fill it out. Mm-hmm. And if they don't fill out their first time, their second or third time, they might feel like, well, I'm not first time anymore. So they never get in your database, your follow-up system. Mm-hmm. You, you don't get their information. So just as a side tip, we say say new guests, because new can be in a lot of things, pretty much if you've never filled one out. Yep. And you got to mention it every week. Again, not, not this awkward stand up and raise your hand if you're new, but as a part of your announcements, or as we call them, next steps, our first one every single week is Connect. We've got a slide with our Connect card so they can see what it looks like. We also typically encourage the next steps person to hope bring the card up with them mm-hmm. so people know exactly what you're talking about, encourage them to fill it out. And we do this. It's our first... And I would just say... None of our people get annoyed by that. Again, yeah. <laughs> they often bring their yeah. friends, and new people come. People know new people are here, and so they expect, like, it's okay to have a, a moment where you're addressing new people. Your normal people aren't going to be, like, they want new people to come. Mm-hmm. So address it, and then, you know, another thing we do is it's our first next step, but we also briefly mention it at the end of service because people, you know, don't always come on time. Yep. And so that way, again, if they came late and missed uh, our, you know, kind of shout-out to new, how to get more information, fill it out. So, we'll, again, talk about other ways to, you know, to get that card. But the first thing is mention it every single week, even if you know from stage there's no new people there, because not everyone else knows that, and you want to get into the habit of training your people that if they bring someone, they will have some sort of acknowledge, non-awkward acknowledgement that they came for their first time. Yeah, and even if, even if you don't have anyone brand new, there's still the potential that yep. you have people that are there that aren't connected, that maybe they've been coming, they're not in a group or serving or whatever you consider connected. And so that could be the way to kind of bridge that gap. So yep. we talk about, you know, if you're new with us or if you want more information or whatever the reason, if you haven't filled one out, fill one out. And so, and especially like you said, mentioning at the end of service, I think is really helpful because we do kind of beginning ish, maybe like after first song and then end of service. Cause from the beginning to end of service, there's a lot that there's a lot that happens. Yep. And, just the likelihood of remembering things from the beginning of service is unlikely after the message, after worship, after whatever you talk about, other announcements. And so mentioning at the end, that's one of the main things outside of the message. One of the main things we want them to remember is if you haven't filled this out, fill it out and you can do it right now and you can do something with it in about five seconds. Yeah. So and it's, it's, the, it's the last thing that they're, it's one of, not the very last thing, one of the last things that they're going to hear because we want to make sure that they remember that this is something that's really important to us. Yeah. And at the end of the service too, they're much more likely to fill it out than the beginning because they're not sure how it's going to go yeah, or what they, to expect. They know if they like it. Yeah, and if it's <laughs> yeah. semi decent and they're somewhat interested in maybe coming back and you remind them, "Hey, make sure you do this," you know, right here, then the, you know, the likelihood of doing it is a lot higher than just mentioning it at the beginning and then kind of forgetting about it and then leaving and then they come back maybe next week and like, "Oh, I forgot to do this thing." Mm-hmm. So, beginning of end of service every week. Yeah, the the the, <clears throat> the other way I've seen it done well, which we don't do here for a couple of reasons, but and I've seen churches do this where they kind of mention it with their announcements whatever. 
and that's the main point they mention it because they have you drop it in the giving basket as dro- yep. as if they pass a basket. Yep. Which if you've been listening to us, we don't pass a basket. So if if that's the way you do it, that may that may kind of work for what mm-hmm. you're doing. But we don't. So for us, it makes most sense to make sure it's mentioned at the end of service because that's when they're going to remember to do something with it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. If you do pass a giving basket, that's a, that's a great also a great time mm-hmm. to remind people to drop it in just to get their information. Yep. So that's the first thing. Mention it every single week. Second second thing is that you want to get this professionally printed. So not cardstock, you know, on your home printer. Mm-hmm. Um, not black and white, mm-hmm. but like get a nice little design. Uh, and this is not expensive. No, not at it all. It is not expensive. And again, getting and retaining new people is the mission of your church. And it is like, you should spend some money on this. Mm-hmm. And so ours are not big. I mean, I don't know how you would size them. They're like the length of a piece of paper. Oh, like they're the, third uh, of the width of one. What are they? Eight, uh, eight and a half? <coughs> three, three? No. Three? Five by eight and a half? No, I think it's three. three I'm looking at three. one. I think like they're three inches. Might yeah, be three by eight, maybe. It's, it's a template that Staples has. Yeah, <laughs> long and thin. Yeah, is. long and thin. And again, we've got you know we've got an episode on like what to put on there, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but it's professionally printed, mm-hmm. and it looks nice. It feels nice. You can write on it. But it's like, oh, like they seem like they've. Effort. It doesn't have to be like. And the thing about it is, once you've made it, you've made it. So you don't have to like re- redo it all the time. But get someone, put some pictures on it if you can from your yep. church or somewhere. But if you don't have pictures, just. Your church colors or something, just get it professionally printed so that it looks like, uh, so again, people are more likely to fill it out. Yeah, and I think, I I do think that having it an unusual size Mm. helps because, you know, the way we do it, we have it sticking out of Bibles, but um, it's not just like another, it's not just something that kind of gets lost with everything else. It's something that sticks out if they grab a few things, if they take our, you know, we we do like, you can write down notes, like like a notes handout. It's different size than that. So it doesn't just kind of get lost with the mix. And we have it, it's, 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 uh, whatever kind of paper it is but it's it's not glossy it's matte right it's one you can write on yeah. so i with i remember previous church we were with our launch sunday we got like these super nice printed um like similar size uh connect cards and they were they looked great a ton of people tried to fill them out but we accidentally printed them on the version that you can't write on mm. and we provided pens so people are trying people like literally having to like scratch it in <laughs> scratch the information in so we had to spend all this money to get them completely reprinted, and so make sure you can write on them. But it's the, it's it's matte, not glossy. That's yep. what you want. Um, but get it with color, make it look good. And the funny thing is, is this is something that is, I don't remember the exact price. We get them printed at Staples. They're really not expensive. And the smaller you are, probably means the lower budget you have. The the less of these you're going to go through. So it's it, yeah. I feel like it almost makes more sense like even if you're struggling with budget it almost makes more sense if you're a smaller church to get these that look nice because they're you, you know you can buy them in packs of hundreds and yep. it's going to last you a long time if you're a small church so bite the bullet take eat the cost which is gosh 50 or 60 bucks like it's <laughs> it's not expensive i mean it's different in different places but one, for us it's not one person which would be more than that but if one person mm-hmm. fills out a connect card you, you will more than make and, and or sorry one person is, comes back and like connects because they had a good connect card experience, yep. and you got the information. Whereas if you hadn't said anything and just hoped they would have talked to somebody, well worth fifty or sixty dollars. <laughs> oh yes, yes, <laughs> definitely worth the cost. So yep. all that to say, get it professionally printed. Just it's not, I don't know. Cheap is not always better, and yep. free is not always better if you're looking to like long term health and stuff like that. So get it professionally done, Staples, Office Depot, whatever. Yes, yeah. and if you're if you're trying to figure out how to design it, if if you don't have anyone that can help you with it, which that would be ideal, but Canva. If you've never used it before, yep. Canva.com. It's free. Uh, they have templates for things like these. This you can you can just like change the information and plug in what you want. So you don't have to. Don't feel like if you're not a design person, don't feel like you have to design it completely from scratch. There are yep. tools out there that'll help you do it. And you can literally Google church cat church cards, cards and yep. just change your information. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So that being said, what what should you what information should you ask for? Good question. Number three, ask for minimal information. So you know the traditional. I mean. I don't think many churches do it anymore unless they're kind of more traditional. It's like name, phone number, email, address, kids, kids' ages. I don't know. Every, <laughs> yeah. Everything in the world. Yeah, bio. Yeah, it's like, it's just the more information you ask for, the less likely people will fill it out. You might think, well, they'll just give what they want, but they'll just look at all that stuff and say no. Yep. I don't remember the statistics on it, but we found, or we've heard or whatever, three things. Over three, you really start to lose people's willingness to fill things out. Mm-hmm. So we only ask for name, email, and phone number. We don't have their address, which, you know, would be nice to have. <laughs> but yeah. if they sign up to serve or in a group, we, w- we will get it. Uh, we don't send a follow-up like letter. If that's something you do, then you'll want to add their address. Just mm-hmm. know that you might get less 
statistically saying you will get fewer you know, people fill out their stuff. Yeah. Um, you want to ask for minimal information. So the front of our connect card is, you know, it's got, you know, a picture and it asks for name, email and phone number. And like, that's pretty much it. Now mm -hmm. on the back, you might want more information. And so instead of leaving, leaving, like one thing you might do is like leave a blank and like to fill in extra. What's better, what we do, what I would recommend is leaving check boxes. So if there's different ministries, like for us, we've got like baptism or community groups or new city kids, or there's a handful of things that mm -hmm. partnership, um, if they're interested in, there's a checkbox on the back that all they, all they have to do is check it, mm -hmm. which is nice. So if we've got our next partnership lunch coming up or baptism Sunday or something like that, they just have to flip it over and check it. Or, or you know, they'll say, like, if it's my first time, if they want to check it, if I just committed to following Jesus today. Mm -hmm. But instead of asking, like, all these things, just give them, like, the main things that you put, you seem to push for often, just have them just do, like, check boxes on the back or somewhere else where they're not having to write anything else out so that they can easily say what the information is that they want. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, people are filling this out either during service or immediately after service, and if it takes a long time to fill out, it's just less likely that they're going to yeah. sit there and do it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, name, email, and phone number, th there's there's times where address would be nice, but it's yeah. we just know that these this is the information that we're going to use, like, I mean, this, uh, in our follow-up process, which means we're going to use it today. You know, yeah. it, it, use it right after service. And... Um, so that's what we ask for. And there's other ways to get different information if you if you want it. You know, for instance, um, our kid, you know, when people registered for their kids, if they're a new family, we ask for more information because it's mm -hmm. required. Yeah. You know, they, they, we, they don't have a choice but to fill it all out. And, you know, there's like for safety purposes and things like that. And so if they have kids, we'll get their address. And then yep. the kids, you know, uh, ministry can send them something if, if need be. And so there's other ways to get information other than just connect card. And like you said, if they connect, we'll get that information anyways if yep. we need it. And so name, email, phone number. I don't think there's any reason unless you have like a very specific reason you want a different piece of information um, to get much else. Yep. And they just do check boxes. Check and boxes. again, we've, we've done episode previously on follow-up process. So we won't get into it here other than to say, you know, if you do check boxes like us and someone checks it, you need to follow up not just with your normal follow-up process, but also that specific thing Yeah. on top of it. Maybe your follow-up process will get to it in like two weeks, mm -hmm. but you need to respond like within two, one or two days yeah. because they clearly want more information about this and they've asked for it. So don't let it go to waste. Yep. So ask for minimal information and uh, you'll be more likely to get it. Number four, create an obvious place for new people to go after service. So if they fill out a Connect card, <clears throat> like what do you want them to do with it? Mm -hmm. It needs to be super obvious and super easy to explain you know for us you know we have our connect table that's next that's in front of a wall that we have painted teal yeah. so we say <laughs> go to the teal wall yep um it's, it's nice to have something like colorful or really easy to explain so you don't have to say like go to the connect table and the connect table's here and it's next to this thing or maybe you have a welcome tent outside and if mm -hmm. you only have one tent like that's very obvious. Go to the tent. But you want to make it. You want to create a space that that I know exactly where I need to go i don't have to ask somebody where to go um it's easy to get there because you want to remove as many obstacles as possible. So what are they supposed to do with that connect card? Once they filled it out, don't assume people know, you know what to do because you've been at, you go to church every Sunday, but they don't. So create an obvious place for new people to bring their connect card. And, uh, and I, I, so for a long time, we just had connect table or, or tents if we're in our old space. But when, once we painted this wall teal, which if you're watching the video, it's like right here. It's right in the middle of the <laughs> lobby or right to the side of the lobby, but right, visible from everywhere. Um, it really helps because I think we forget that people who aren't church people have no clue what connect table means. Yep. It's not common language anywhere else. Even if there's only church. one table in your lobby, they exactly. still don't know. Yep. <laughs> and so you could, you could probably do different things where you could like connect in big letters or something right. like that. There's, there's other ways, but just make it painfully obvious, whatever mm -hmm. you're going to call it, name it, that they know where to go without asking anybody else. And so I think, I mean, obviously this... You can really only do this if you're not portable and have a space. But if if you are able to paint a wall, like that was that is the easiest thing. Is just go to the teal wall. All you have to do is just go out in the lobby, do a 360, find the one wall that's teal, and go to it. <laughs> um, and on it, in big letters, we wrote or we we have a graphic that says "Connect with us." Yeah. So it's it's literally impossible to miss. Um, but this is one of the things I think that's kind of the way I mentioned earlier about doing it in the um, like uh, giving basket, dropping it in giving right. basket. This is one place where I think that that kind of fails is people can do that, but you're missing that immediately after service connection where yep. they get to talk to somebody. So I would say if, if that's the way you really want to go, I, people do it, it can be done, but having it, having them have to actually bring it to a place and hand it to somebody really helps actually make a connection where they can have a conversation with someone right there and not you know drop it off. They hear from someone later, they've kind of missed that personal connection yep. and kind of go about their day. Yes. So. 
So create an obvious place yep. that they know exactly where it goes. You don't have to explain it for a long time. Again, if you could paint a wall, if you just have a table, get like a, maybe you can get a tablecloth or something that's a particular color. Yeah. Just super obvious so people know exactly table. where to go. Because right. that, that also either consciously or unconsciously, people will think, oh, they've expected new people to come. Because, mm-hmm. again, regardless of your church size, new people often think, especially if they're not really familiar with church stuff and they're new to it, that they are the only new person there. Yeah. There's no other new. You could have a church of a thousand people, and they will think they are the only new person there. So, having a very obvious process of here's the connect card, here's where you go, says, oh, m- they expect people like me mm-hmm. to be here. Yeah. So, that's good. create an obvious place for people to go. Number five, give a good gift. Mm. So, we would recommend giving a gift, not just give me information, just offer something. Yeah. And give something that people want. Yeah. So the the default. We did it when we launched. Everyone wants to do is some sort of church swag, a coffee mug, okay. a pen. Nobody wants that. Mm-hmm. Nobody that is new to your church, I should say, wants yeah, that. Yes, they don't know if they're coming back. They right. don't care. Most people already have a million mugs anyway. Nobody, like, that's not <laughs> it. If I'm new, yeah. it's not it. Oh, I really want a, this church's mug. I'm going to give them my connect card. Mm-hmm. I would recommend you give something that people want because people are always... We are always thinking, this sounds unspiritual, but even Christians too, we're always thinking about everything in terms of what is this, what is what does this do for me? Mm-hmm. Like what is the benefit for me? And so I would <laughs> I'm not against it, but I've seen it for a while, and I know some churches and I maybe I could be wrong, but I I I don't think this is the most effective. Some churches will do a and we talked about this, but we never have done it. Like give to if you do connect card and you can choose a charity of your choice that we'll mm-hmm. donate to. Mm-hmm. And I totally get that that's that is a great thing to do. I just think if we're thinking of, especially if they're new, people are always thinking, what is in it for me? That may sound nice, but that doesn't, <laughs> they don't necessarily want it. And if they're not a Christian, they might not even care. Because mm-hmm. I've seen the options. A lot of them, they're, they're Christian-based options. And yeah. It's kind of obvious, like a pro-life center. It's just like, I don't know that I would want to, I mean, I personally would. Mm-hmm. But if I'm like, I'm not even sure what this Jesus thing, that any of those options sound good to me. And so I I don't know. Maybe I don't even know if Brian disagrees with me. But like, <laughs> so what? Well, here's what we do: we give a Chick Fil A gift card yeah. because everybody loves Chick Fil A. We we did you know Starbucks or something is fine, but not everybody drinks coffee. Mm-hmm. There's a Chick Fil A right next to the church. We say it's so funny. Like almost every Sunday, we make a joke about Chick Fil A being closed on Sunday morning, and people mm-hmm. laugh. Yep. Every Sunday, our people know exactly what we're going to say, and they still laugh about it. Yeah. So whatever you think a good gift is, give something that people actually want, so they'll actually give you their Connect card if they're on the fence about it. Yeah. So. I, I don't I don't disagree. Well, I'll get it. Okay, so I, I agree. Don't give a church mug. Like your your people may want it that are like members and stuff may want it something branded, but new people don't care. It's just another thing, and nobody nobody's gonna fill it out to get that thing. Yeah. It's just kind of something you put in their hand and they hold the rest of the day. Um, so something that provides them value, like like you said, we do a Chick Fil A gift card. I think is is great because i mean it's easy to talk about everyone knows what it is you know chick-fil-a is obviously common where we are in the and, South. and if you're in a smaller town too like adam our first church plant they do a local restaurant yeah i don't know what it is and everyone loves it yeah and so it's like yeah do that exactly that's good and like so the the giving to an organization thing i've, I've seen churches do it i'm sure places do it really well to, to me the challenge isn't i think it's a i think the idea is good but i think it's hard to and i don't even know how you do this effectively but explain what each organization is in a yeah. succinct and effective manner. Yep. And so, and, and without just having it be like general. So like if, if I were to go somewhere, like sure, you, I'll give you my information if you donate to someone, but I do want to know who you're donating mm-hmm. to. And I don't really have the time during church to like look up the names of these organizations. And not every organization is like clear based on their name. Yeah. And so I think it's, I think the idea is okay. And maybe there's an effective way to do it. I don't know that I've seen it done in effective ways. So I'll kind of leave it at that. But giving yeah. someone something that they can take, that's just, it's nothing about like the, I think the whole argument is always like, you know, if you give them a mug or a magnet or something like that, then they'll see it. You'll, <laughs> you'll be, you'll be on their mind more because people will see it when they get their coffee, they'll right. see it in their cabinet. But like, I don't know, to me, it just seems Maybe I read a little too much into it, but it just seems as a, as a guest, very self-serving. Like, mm. you want me to give you your information, and in return, you want to give me something so that I'll be reminded about you. <laughs> Where it's like, giving them a Chick-fil-A gift card, it's like, I, hey, forget it. Like, hopefully you don't, but this is just as a thank you. And there's nothing in it for us. It's not us kind of doing this little, like, secretive marketing thing where we give you something so that you'll remember us, but it's just take this as a gift. And that's yep. what a a gift is something that is a gift, not a gift so that you get something in return. <laughs> um, and so the way we have it is um, we kind of have a little Chick-fil-A gift card, and it's on, mounted on... Uh, and we've... 
about a month or so ago, if you, if you search the Practical Church Planning Facebook group, I uploaded a picture of what ours looked like. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. perfect. So you yes. can join the group. Just join. search like Chick Fil A gift card or giveaway or something. I don't know. It's in there. Yeah. The image yeah. is in there. It's just it's it's the same size as our Connect card. It's just yeah. kind of a, a, a thing that has like our mission statement and um, a, I don't know social media. Has. Yeah, social media. And, and on like the a, back, it's different ways they can serve with our Connect director's email address. Yeah, just information. So yeah. it's like here's some information that you can leave with, but you are still just getting your gift that's just solely yeah. for you. So I, I think it really works and kind of covering all bases there. Yeah, I think, too, the giving organization, while I don't, I'm don't, i skeptical about how effective it is, I also think, yeah, trying to explain that, I mean, you want simple, easy, and quick. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, you have to put the information on your Connect card, and that's a lot of stuff. If, yeah. if you want to try to explain the organizations, or just, it's just, it's. I, I love the intent behind it, but in terms of what is going to get you the most Connect cards, which I think is the most important thing. Yes, giving organizations, that's great. But you want a Connect card, so you can, people, you can get people connected to your church. Give people what they want. And I think if you're going to do it this way, you could even, this costs you a couple extra dollars, but if you're like really passionate about it, I want to do it this way, you could kind of do both where it's like, fill out a, uh, this may be a lot of information. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, but fill out a connect card and in turn, you'll get a you know Chick-fil-A gift card and we'll donate five bucks to X organization yep. that we partner with. Not just like choose whichever, but yeah, I think, yeah, that's if we have a better. relationship with one, we'll just do it. You don't have to tell us you want it. This is just part of the process. And that kind of takes out their kind of having to figure things out if you really yeah. want to do and it And this might way. be super controversial. Like we've, we have recently connected with and we're doing a lot with uh, an organization here in Raleigh that, that's Christian-based, but it feeds uh, food insecurity. It's what they call food insecurity here in Raleigh and Wake County. There's a lot of it. You know, obviously, like there are a lot of places in the country. Mm -hmm. So it's Christian-based, but it's you giving, you're giving people food. So people, Christian or not, are like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're addressing an issue that everyone agrees is an yeah, issue. Yeah, so I yeah. think if you want to do the organization to give away, you need to pick just one. Don't mm -hmm. make someone else pick. And it, <laughs> this might, again, might be bad. It needs to be something everybody wants. Mm -hmm. So pro-life, 100% agree with it, great. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I would choose a pro-life center to be my one thing, because yeah. if you have someone who's not a Christian, not sure what they think about that, they may at this point not want to support that. Mm -hmm. And so you might not get a Connect card, which again is helping them connect to experience Jesus and hopefully show them these things. Um, I, yeah, I would do something that it's like Christian or not, everybody's like, they agree, this is good. Yeah, yeah, so. that, that's a good point. That makes sense. Yep, so offer a good gift. Not church swag, not something people don't want. Number yep. six, this is, I think all these are important. Saying it every week is super important. Mm -hmm. If you say it every week, you will get more Connect cards. Having an obvious place to go, super important. If people know exactly what to do with it, you will get more Connect cards. This is also super important, and that is get Connect cards near their seat. Mm -hmm. it, it should not, I, to be most effective, it should not be something that you hand out to people as they're coming in because not everyone's going to take a handout. You know, they don't know what it is, whatever. Yep. It should not be something where they have to go somewhere to fill it out themselves because they might not want to do that. You need to be simple, easy, and quick. For us, it's simple because all of our seats have, like, pockets in the back where we have our Bible and we have our Connect card. So they're right there, and the front row is just under the seat. If you don't have something like that, you could put it under the seat. I personally am not a fan of putting things on a seat because it makes it look like the seats are reserved. And, again, if you're new, that is, you, don't, you don't know what to expect, and if you see things on seats, you're just going to assume that I'm not supposed to sit there. You're not going to understand. So I'm not a fan of putting things on the seat because it can come across like it's reserved. So, you know, we do the things, you know, seat backs. If you don't have one, maybe I would just put it under your seat, but you need to get it somewhere in the service so that when you mention it, they can do it right there in the beginning or the end so it's done. Not like go to this place and fill us out, and they're like, well, it's going to take me a minute to fill it out. I have to talk to someone while yeah. I'm trying to do it. Get the Connect card in their hands, in the service, so it's super accessible when you talk about it. Yeah, and, and what this really helps you talk about it from stage because you can tell them exactly where it is. Yep. It's not if you got one, if you didn't get one, raise your hand. Raise your hand, yeah. Raise yeah. Your hand, yeah. Oh. But it's like if it's under your seat, it's it's under everyone's seat. Not some seats, it's under everyone's seat. So if yep. you want one, just reach down and get it. And you know, for us, seat back in front of you. Um, it just makes it really easy to talk about. And it's I think it helps people not feel that pressure of they have to fill it out right then, where if it's there, then like, if they get bored during the message, they can fill it out and look at it. Or if it's just kind of there in front of them, if they get off the Bible, you know, for us, we put it in the Bible sticking out. So if they get off the Bible to follow along, it's in their hands. Um, and it's just, it's very accessible to anybody, whether they want it or not. So yep. it's just an easy thing to grab. Yep. So some, I don't know, again, if you don't have seat backs, I think under the seat, seat is, yeah, it's fine. I think under yeah. the seat is just fine. I mean, the seat backs is great because you literally see it yes. and you don't have to bend down. But I, I was, I mean, you can still have them. Like we have Connect cards at our Connect table and stuff. But you want to be able to say, "This is what it looks like, and here's where it is." Mm -hmm. And people, you know, if they're new, they often don't want to 
come across or like look like they're new to everybody, even though people don't care. And so having a really subtle, hey, it's right there. Mm-hmm. You just fill it out. Not, you know, go to this place and go pick it up. If you can get it in the auditorium uh, near their seat somewhere where while they're sitting, they can grab it, your chances of getting it filled out are a lot higher. Yes, so, definitely. Especially if, again, you get a gift card or somewhere nice, mm-hmm. and all I got to do is fill it out of my seat. I don't even have to, like, talk to you. Really, I just trade it and leave. Yeah, exactly. That's that all I has do. happened. Yeah. yeah. So get connect cards in the other seat. That was number six. And number seven, last but not least, mm-hmm. have someone available as soon as service is over to receive the connect card. So you don't want to say, go to this place, and the person who's supposed to be there is not there, and they're standing there waiting to get what the thing that they're going to get, and yeah. it's just awkward for them. How we do it, uh, you know, the person who does next steps or announcements is the same person who is at the connect table. And we have people that serve that are around there, but the person that we tell you, hey, trade your trick, your gift card or your connect card into me mm-hmm. at the tier wall. It's like super obvious. Yep. I, you know, it just makes it easier. They haven't talked to you, but at least they, they've seen you, and so they know like where they're going and, and what's going to happen. Um, and so... You know, if you do that approach of like you have someone who does the announcements, or maybe it's the pastor, you know, whatever, say, hey, I'll be right there at the end of service. You've got to be there right at the end of service. If you get stuck talking to somebody, then you've just like ruined the chance yep. there. And so you need want to have you want to have someone there again. If it's not the next best person, that's fine. Just say, here's what I would do. Just a side note, I, I'm not a fan of mentioning names from stage without context. So let's say Mary. You could say, hey, Mary's going to be at the connect table, something like that. Don't say, or you want, you know. You don't want to just say, hey, go see Mary, because no one knows who Mary is. Yeah. If you say Mary, who's at the connect table, or Mary, who's at the teal wall, you know, she'll take your connect card, something like that. But you need to make sure somebody's there right when service is over, because you know, if you're new and you don't know anybody, you're not going to be hanging around often. Mm-hmm. So you got you to beat them to the punch. And I would say, as try as hard as you possibly can to have someone on stage be there. If it can't yeah. happen, like you said, mention their name, get, make sure they're identifiable, but like... Do everything you can to get whoever's doing announcements or pastor. I don't know if that's the best idea, but somebody yep. that they can see there because it's so much easier to say, come see me than come mm-hmm. see someone else. Um, if, especially if someone came like by themselves, or if they weren't invited by anybody or not anybody's guest, their only really connections are the people that they see from stage unless they had yep. had a conversation before service. And so it's much more comfortable for them to go to someone that they recognize than to go to a table, especially if a table like if people kind of stand near it, it's kind of unclear if this is the person I give it to, and it's really uncomfortable to kind of ask, do I give it to you or <laughs> someone else? You know, you're not sure if the person has made it there yet if you get out a little bit uh, quick. And so if possible, the person from stage that talks about it, it, the best case scenario is for them to be the person. And so like what I do, if, if I'm the person that, that does it, because obviously if you say that, you got to make sure to beat them there. <laughs> um, and so I, I make a joke every single week if I'm, if because like the next steps person, we have generally closed service as well, so yeah. they talk about it again. And almost every week I make the joke of, I'll race you there. I'll be there in five seconds. I'll beat you. Uh, um, so if you're new, you know, I'll be standing there. And I say that just kind of as a joke, but I'm also saying that to everyone who's normal, you know, who <laughs> normally comes here as don't talk to me. Like yeah. and, in a nice way, but like don't stop me because this is where I need to be right after service. Um, and so get out there. And that way <laughs> people know who to go to. They recognize the wall or the table. They recognize the face. And it just makes it painfully obvious where to go. Uh, yeah, and it's helpful too. You know, you want to have the main person there, and just you know, it's good to if someone else is serving, just to have someone around because if there's multiple people, yeah, definitely, and they're like waiting in line, you know, they're fine with handing it to someone else. So you want to have the main person there, and just be conscious of if you're gonna have you know two or three new people or two or three groups of new people, having you know, make sure people aren't standing around, you know, to talk to someone or to trade in their card. That's important as well. So, yeah. and I would say this too uh, before I forget. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes. New people, I will talk to them after the service, and I see their Connect card. And sometimes it's five or ten minutes or whatever, and the person's not there. Like the no, the Connect person is like moved or talked to someone else because it's been a little while. You know, if that if, if you notice that happens, like if you're talking to someone, then you should be the one to walk them to the Connect table. Like don't leave them hanging. If if it's been a while after service and you know someone may not may or may not be at the cable, Connect table, just say hey, let me get you a Connect card, you know, or let me just get you a gift card too, because that would be unfortunate if like. They stayed and talked to you, which is great, and they go out there, and there's nothing to do. So I've experienced that myself, so just make sure you help them if you talk to them after service. Yeah, and I mean, I think you can even do that even if the person is still there, because yep. they have a connection with you, you're having a conversation, just take care of the whole thing instead of like feeling like kind of weird about ending the conversation and handing them off to somebody else, unless you literally need to you know, yep. move on. That's a different story, but if you're, if you're talking to them and they have it, just help them out and do it for them, and I think that really helps not just 
helps them, but also helps free up the connect person like you're talking about to be able to help someone else. Yep. So have someone available as soon as the service is over to receive the connect card. Those are seven ways to get more connect cards. View those, you will get more. Those are things that we have learned and gotten better at over time. Um, And if that was helpful, again, as we mentioned, you can join the Practical Church Planning Facebook group. Mm -hmm. You can see how we do our gift card thing. Our connect card picture might be up there, too. I'm not sure. Um, And also, if you are a church planter looking to launch within the next two years, make sure you go to practicalplanting.com slash launch. It's our launch team course that will walk you step by step how to create a plan that you can actually work and do to uh, reach and engage more people in your community. Thanks for listening. We'll be with you next time on Practical Church Planting.